Hello everyone and welcome back to our DAX for Beginners series. My name is Brad and in today's video we'll be talking about iterative functions. These functions, also known as X functions, allow us to iterate row by row over a table and perform calculations in a more customized way. We'll be utilizing the SUMX, AverageX, MinX, and MAXX functions and working with our financials data set to see how these work and when to use them. All right, let's take a look. So what are iterative functions exactly? Iterative functions in DAX process each row of a table or each value in a column individually. They create a row context for each row, perform a calculation, and then aggregate sum, average, min, max, etc. the results of these calculations. We can compare this to a non-iterative function, like sum of sales, which just sums the sales column directly without evaluating each row individually in a separate context. We'll start with an example similar to one you might remember from our previous video, where we created a column that applied a 10% tax to each sale. For today's video, let's use SUMX to calculate a discounted sales measure, where each row's sale is multiplied by 0.9 to allow for a 10% discount, and then all the rows are summed. Our measure will look like this. For each row in the table, DAX calculates sales times 0.9. It then sums up all those row by row results into a single value. Now, this is different from just sum of sales times 0.9, which would multiply the total sales by 0.9 once. With sum x, we're computing the multiplication per row, then summing the results. If there were slight differences per row, say if we had different discount rates per product, then this iterative approach would be essential. All right, let's take a look at average x. Similarly, this function iterates over a table and evaluates an expression for each row. Then we get an average of the results. So if we wanted to calculate the average profit margin across each row, rather than a simple aggregated profit margin, we could do so using this measure. For each row in the table, we are dividing profit by sales, then the average X function averages each row level margin. What's key here is that this can yield a different result than simply dividing the sum of profit by the sum of sales. This approach calculates the profit margin on the aggregated profit in sales. The average X function calculates each row's margin, then averages those margins, which can produce a different result if rows vary significantly. Let's grab a table in our canvas and take a look at the differences. We'll pull in country, sales, profit, and our average profit margin measure. We'll also go ahead and create that divide function we just mentioned and pull that into our table as well. So as you can see, we are getting different values for our two average profit margin measures. The reason is that average X effectively treats each row's margin equally, so it is considered a form of an unweighted average. Our simple average profit margin measure, on the other hand, is a weighted average, so rows with larger sales figures drive the overall results more significantly. Now, don't worry if this still doesn't quite make sense to you. Let's hop over to Excel real quick to look at a simple example. Here we've got a very basic data table with a transaction ID, sales, profit, and profit margin calculated by dividing profit by sales. To use the aggregated margin, or our simple average profit margin, we would first sum up our sales, which is equal to 110,000. Then we sum up our profit, which is 12,000. If we then divide 12,000 by 110,000, we get about 11% for our profit margin. To use our row by row margin, or our average X approach, we would simply look at the calculated profit margin for each row, which is 20% and 10%, and then average the two of these together, which is 15%. Now, you might be asking, well, which approach should I use? 
And the answer to that really depends on the business case and the type of analysis you are trying to provide. If you want to know your overall weighted profit margin across the entire data set, reflecting the actual ratio of total profit to total sales, well, then the aggregated margin measure is appropriate. If you want to treat each row or transaction equally and find the average of all margins on a per row basis, then average X is the correct approach. This might be useful if, for instance, each transaction is equally important in an analytic sense, regardless of sales volume. Other iterative functions like min x and max x find the minimum or maximum value of an expression evaluated for each row. For example, let's define a measure to find the lowest row level value when we multiply the manufacturing price with the unit sold. Min x will check the expression for each row and return the smallest number. Similarly, for the highest row level manufacturing cost, we can define our measure like this. Max x iterates through each row to find the maximum value. Let's add these two measures to our table, and now we can see that each country's respective lowest and highest manufacturing costs are displayed. Okay, to recap, we covered some of the major iterative functions, sum x, average x, min x, and max x. Iterative functions operate row by row, applying an expression for each row and then aggregating the result. Sum x and average x differ from sum and average because they allow custom expressions per row. Min x and max x identify the minimum or maximum of an expression across rows. Always be mindful of context, especially filter context, and how row by row calculations respond to slicers, filters, and visuals. And finally, use iterative functions when you need that row level detail, but be aware these functions can be more resource intensive than their non-iterative counterparts. Use them only when row by row logic is necessary. We'll stop there for now, but if you have any questions about this content or would like the BIX team to cover a topic in a future video, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay updated on future videos, and thanks for watching.